but uh, hey, let's get started, dude. All right, you go ahead. Yeah. Hey, guys, welcome. Gospelicious Radio, episode seventeen. Seven. Seventeen. Hey, did you know that seventeen is my favorite number? Is seventeen? Why is seventeen your favorite number? I don't know. It's just, just weird. like seventeen. I, yeah. yeah, that's good. Uh, ever since I was a kid, <laughs> I'm like, no, I don't know. get that chair out of the way. I'm kicking, cha- I'm kicking chairs over this here, guys. Jerry Springer, Jerry, <laughs> Jerry. You know. <laughs> Yeah, I'll admit to the audience that uh, uh, growing up, I may have seen a couple of those episodes. Well, well. Um, I, I mean, what what nineties? I mean, like what nineties kid did not like when you it's stayed just, home from school? Like, did not watch Jerry uh, or Mari? Uh, Mo- is it Mori or Mari? Uh, Mori. Mori, Mori, Mori Povich. Mo- yeah, that's right. Mori Povich. Povich. I, 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 I mispronounced it both ways. It's, 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 it's actually Mari Povich. That's right. Mari Povich. You are, you are the father. You are the father. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Oh, wait, no. Oh, oh no, no, yeah, yeah. When, when, it, when they were the father, it was, oh! Yeah. When it was, you are not the father, it was, yeah! You know? Yeah. But anyways, anyway. Kind of a commentary on the society we live <laughs> yes, in. Yes, pretty much. Uh, but 17 was Precursor. always a favorite of mine when yeah. I was a kid. It would always be my soccer number. It would always be my basketball number. Very cool. Um, and I don't remember why. It was just always a cool number to me. I, yeah. I don't know why. There's really no reason for it. Yeah. You, That's you, all I got. Fun, fun, <laughs> fun fact. Yeah. Fun fact. You, you know you know, I'm a fan of Weird Al Yankovic. Right? Yeah, I know course. you are as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 27 is his favorite number. And if you'll notice, if you listen to Weird Al's songs, uh, he always incorporates the, the number 27 into a lot of his songs. Uh, like, there's wow. the song Albuquerque. It's yeah, in of there. Course, yeah. Uh, there's other songs where where, uh, where he mentions 27. I forget uh, I forget off the top of my head. It's uh, We're recording again at like 6.30 in the morning, everybody, so yeah. forgive us one, one, once again. But, uh, but yeah, the... Uh, uh, but yeah, wow. entitled to have. It's, I didn't know that. Seventeen, twenty-seven. You know, seven is my favorite number. It's something with the sevens. Wow, cool. So yeah. You're seven. I'm seventeen. Weird Al is twenty-seven. It's like we're brothers. We're all brothers. That's right. We're all <laughs> me and you. Seven brothers and Weird Al Yankovic. That's right. Our brother. You got to hear right. first, guys. That's right. You Long did. lost relatives. That's right. <laughs> Amen. But uh, uh, yeah. we got derailed there at the beginning. Yes, but we did. But okay. that's okay. That's okay. what this. That's what this podcast is about. What we're gonna do. Of. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take that train. Yes. We're gonna dust it off. Yes. Yeah, so there you go. We're gonna pick it up. And I don't know why I'm picking it up like this. And but that's right. Well, it's a tiny train. It's a tiny train. It's a very tiny. It's a matchbox train. Matchbox train. Set it back on its track. There we go. Yeah. Send it on its way. There we go. Dust it off. Choo-choo. Yeah. A, a gentle choo-choo. Yes, just a gentle It's like choo-choo. we're singing a falsetto choo-choo. Yeah. There you go well, Anyways um, So today, let's get let's get right into it Because I, I want to uh, talk about a mm. subject We've been wanting to tackle this for a while Yes And um, there have been I don't know what it is But like It's, uh, it's a growing trend in churches In Christianity in general Yep Um and uh, it's the it's this health and wealth yeah. gospel, this prosperity gospel, and um, and so for for people who may not know what the prosperity gospel is, Pastor Tim, I, I was wondering if maybe you could kind of explain sure yeah what, what it is for um, the people. Well, well, a couple different things. Um, you know, the way that I would personally, before I jump into what I'm going to bring here, um, the prosperity gospel is the idea that Christianity exists for your benefit. If I could put it into a very succinct statement, that Jesus, um, and, and when I say benefit, what I talk about, what what I, what I mean by that temporal. is is temporal, yep. is earthly benefit. Your health here on earth, success. Yep, success. Uh, money, um, mm. health, wealth, um, wisdom sometimes is associated with that, and. Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, for that particular kind of theology, I mean, it's just unbiblical. Um, uh, actually, an article that that uh, I'd like to bring up uh, to kind of explain it a little bit better than I can. Maybe we'll put is, this. We'll put this in the description too. Yeah, that'd be great. It's uh, through the Gospel Coalition, which I encourage you all, um, if you're looking for a good blog or a good uh, resource, is gospel the the gospelcoalition.org. There's an article. Uh, by Joe Carter called What You Should Know About the Prosperity Gospel 
and um, I, I'll let you read the in, the entirety of, of the whole thing, but kind of just jumping right in, uh, he kind of gives this definition. He says, the prosperity gospel, also known as the health and wealth gospel, or by its most popular brand, the word of faith movement. Just an interesting fact here, and we hope to have him on relatively soon. Uh, John Sampson, uh, who is a pastor in uh, at King's Church in uh, in and near Phoenix, Arizona, uh, he's spoken at our church once. I hope to have him back soon. He was a former Word of Faith preacher, but has repented of this. Uh, so uh, he, he his will... perspective would be very interesting. Yeah, I'd love to have him on the show at some time. Mm. Um, we'll have to we'll have to do a phoner on that one. Yeah, that would be great. Um, uh, Health and Wealth Gospel, or by its most popular brand, the Word of Faith movement, is a perversion of the gospel of Jesus that claims that God rewards increases in faith with increases in health or wealth. As Stephen Hunt explains, in the forefront is the doctrine of the assurance of divine physical health and prosperity through faith. In short, this means that health and wealth are the automatic divine right of all Bible-believing Christians and may be procreated by faith as part of the package of salvation since the atonement mm-hmm. of Christ includes not just the removal of sin but the removal of sickness and poverty and I think that's a great definition wow. don't you yeah yeah that's an awesome definition mm-hmm. it, 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 uh, it adds it adds this sort of like I'm trying to think of a, a, a uh, an, an analogy it almost adds like Extra icing onto yeah. onto the cake, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, for unne- sure. unnecessary icing. <laughs> well, no, no, I think it's great. I think it's, I think it's, I think he's spot on yeah. with his with his definition because the idea, it's almost the idea that God owes you. Yeah, like like, right? like so he's somehow required. <laughs> he's bound by this requirement of of rewarding you for your faith. Yeah, with with temporal stuff. Yeah, I mean, so so instant for so for instance, like okay, if I do something for the Lord, yeah, now, I, now God suddenly has to. He is obligated, like you've strong armed God yeah. into yeah, doing yeah. something, right? And and to like me, he's living in reaction to what you're doing. Yeah, <laughs> like he doesn't know what's going to happen next, and he right. hasn't planned anything, and um, uh, which again denies the sovereignty of God over all things, but. Uh, but also the idea of a God that just is reactionary. I mean, do we want to yeah. serve a God who is reactionary? Right. Um, and that's and that's really, really kind of at the heart of this. Also, I, also, I mean, from a more pastoral perspective, uh, you know, just the idea of I, people in your churches. I mean, like, just coming from my perspective, they. People serve for all sorts of different reasons. Okay, yeah, yeah. people serve to honor Christ, which is the goal, but people also serve for other selfish reasons. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, and, that's very true. Yeah. And so, and so, and, and it's fine. I mean, that's just where we all are in terms of our our uh, yeah. spiritual maturity. But, but like the the worst of the worst is when you have to deal with this kind of thing, especially when something bad comes into your uh, you know, one of your parishioners' lives, because then the idea there is, is well, just as I said at the beginning, God owes me. Right. Uh, why right. did God allow this to come into my life after I have served Him so so much? And then all of a sudden, it either, it, it either leads to resentment towards God, um, or a more uh, perseverant attitude towards um, you know the idea of. Of uh, you know, just trying to earn more of God's uh, favor in right. terms of sickness, poverty, uh, you know, health, you know, wealth. I mean, all of these kind of things. You know what I mean? And so, anywho, I, I don't know. Well, I'm it, just talking. It, yeah. it's, it's interesting because um, when you put the because obviously the prosperity gospel is mm. focused it's focused on yourself. It's yes, not, it's not focused on God. Yeah. It, it, the, the, the lens is inverted. Yeah, back towards you, right? It's that's that's sort of the point. Um, yeah. So when you brought up um, you brought up when bad things happen when when trials and tribulations sure. come, the natural result of that of following that path would be to think that you've done something to anger God. Yes, that's the opposite end. Or yeah, to upset yeah. God, right? And you know we, we see it all the time. And and quite frankly, I think it's a temptation to think that way 
even if you don't believe in the prosperity gospel. Yeah. You know, it's I, I know I've been there. Yeah. Um, you know, but um, it, it's some. But, but I think when, what we said uh, when we first introduced the topic was was I think an important thing to to understand about the about the prosperity gospel is that um, when we think that way. Yeah. We're removing God's sovereignty. Yeah. That's a, that's I think that's a really important point to make. Well, you know, I I would agree with that. I mean, I think ultimately, I think ultimately, um, like we re- we remove the factor of God and His greater purpose behind yeah. why we would do what he, what we would do. Actually, just uh, go go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, no, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I was yeah, yeah. I was just going to finish the point in saying that any time, any time when we picture God as someone who's waiting for us to act before we before he can enact whatever he's going to mm. do um that i i i don't that that diminishes god greatly mm-hmm. greatly mm-hmm. greatly yeah um and quite frankly he just he's that's not how he operates yeah that's that, just no, not how he it's operates. not you know what i mean and um, um yeah and, and and you know it's it's a very tempting it's a very tempting uh um it's a very tempting theology mm-hmm. uh, for many because it's um, you know everyone wants everyone wants rewards. Mm-hmm. Every, mm-hmm. Everyone wants to earn something. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, it, it's you know it, to sit there and be like, oh, I, I'm gonna do these good deeds. I'm gonna I'm gonna have all this faith. Yeah, I'm gonna pray. For four, whatever. Yeah, four, I'm just throwing out random I'm just gonna, numbers. Yeah, four hours pray, a day. Pray, 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 and, pray and, yeah. and I'm just gonna wait for the money to rain down or whatever. Well, that's the thing. Well, you know, it, it, and also going back to your previous point, like about the idea of okay, well, if I disobey God, all of a sudden, like you know, hellfire and brimstone is yeah, gonna fall from heaven. Yeah. You know, like I, I remember the passage where um, I was trying to find it. I can't find it, but I believe it was the blind man uh, who was blind since birth. And the Pharisees come to him and say, come to Jesus and say, what 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 sin has his parents done? Right, right. That he deserved this. And Jesus says, no. The reason why this happened was was so that God's glory could be shown through this man. And then he healed him, and that was it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so the entire purpose of that man's blindness was to show Christ's glory. There was no other purpose. I mean, like, and and that's what I think of when I think of like people who suffer tremendously. Um, you know, like people who suffer physically or, or whatever. That that the re- that, that sometimes we don't know the entirety of the reason right. behind why we allow why God allows suffering into their lives, and yet it does have a purpose. It has the purpose of glorifying God ultimately. I think of people like Johnny Erickson Tata. Remember? Yeah, sure. You know what I mean, like sure. she, you know, she, uh, you know, paraplegic. You yeah. know, what I mean, the whole nine yards. Cancer, right? Cancer. Yeah. I mean, the whole, whole and, uh, whole and nine. even even uh, I think her husband has cancer now. Yeah. Um, you know, it's yeah. it's crazy. All the trials that she's me? been through. Yeah, I can, I can you hear, hear me. You, can, can you hear good? Can you hear me now? Okay. Oh, for I can some, hear you good. For some there, reason, yeah. for some reason, I sounded far away, but I think I sound no, okay. No, 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 you sound good. Excellent. You sound, uh, excellent. Continue, sir. Yeah. So, so yeah, Johnny Erickson Tata. I mean, like, I mean, I think, I think about that, and and like, so for anybody who's who's struggling with the idea of suffering in God's providence, I mean, I would, I would highly recommend reading anything or listening to anything by her. Yeah. Um, in terms of this idea of of God's uh, sovereignty over suffering, but anywho's, yeah, we're, we're gonna say something, brother. Yeah. Well, no, I, I, I have. Yeah, obviously, there, I think there's mm. tons of scripture, mm-hmm. tons of scripture mm. that that goes against this prosperity gospel. Oh yes. Um, what uh, in in your experience as a pastor, um, what scriptures do prosperity preachers point to to mm. back up what they're saying? Because they, I mean, yeah. in, in their mind, they have to think. Okay, there's, there's, this is, this seems legit. So I, if they're gonna preach it, it seems yeah. like they would have some sort of scripture to back it up, right? Yeah. So what, what would, what would they? I mean, obviously they're taking something out of context. Yeah, I, w- I would definitely say that the number one passage, besides the end chapters of Mark, but probably uh, in terms of the health part, would be uh, James chapter five. Um, James chapter five, jumping into verse thirteen would probably be the most common passage that they usually use uh, and misinterpret. It says this, Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? 
uh, let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Uh, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sin, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The, the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. And then he prayed again. And heaven gave rain and bore its fruit. And so so the idea there is that, again, taking this outside of its context, is that Elijah had great faith, and he prayed that it wouldn't rain. Therefore, if you pray for these great things, if you just have enough faith that this that this will happen. That's faith, the logic. prayer, results. Yes. But the problem with James chapter 5, and, and, and again, i got to kind of, I, I was looking it up on my... Um, context? Yeah, is context, of course. Yeah. <laughs> context, context. Context is always key, and and you need to you need to always, always, always uh, keep context in mind. You have to remember that. Uh, you know what I want to do is I'm just going to bring this up here um, with uh, it's First uh, Kings 14 is where that actually took place. And um, I'm just going to bring it up here. Really talking quick. about Elijah. Yeah, talking about Elijah. And, um, you know what, never mind, I'll just bring it up in my actual Bible, because I don't, I, I'm, I'm like so old school with, with everything that I do here, and, um, and so, um, <clears throat> uh, the, uh, oh, maybe it was 7 Kings 14, I'm sorry. It's very exciting right here, right here. Yeah, I know. I'm always looking the flipping up of stuff. pages. Uh, flipping this is what you get, guys. Something. That's right. You know, good stuff. Um, <laughs> you know, um, context is important. I'm sorry, I'm losing my mind. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. Hang on, just a moment. I need my old King James, of course, and um, and because I know, I know particular Bibles. I don't know if this is something completely off topic here, but you know, I, but, I, this is, you it, know. it's funny. While, while you're flipping there, it's, yeah. it's funny when you actually look at the immediate context of James. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you look in James chapter five. The, the what you just read is right at the end. Yeah. Um, but it's actually in the context of he's actually he's warning warning rich people. Yes, he is. <laughs> well, yeah, it, 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 ironically, you know what I, I mean, mean right? I mean, you check out verses one and two. It says, "Come now, you rich. Yeah. Weep and howl for the miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches have rotted, and your garments are moth eaten." Yeah. I mean, is it? I mean, isn't it amazing that that like he's addressing that very issue that we're talking about? Yeah. It's it's actually First Kings seventeen. I'm sorry, oh, yeah. I, I I messed up. But yeah, I mean, it's amazing that he's actually, uh, you know, he's actually speaking against really when you think about it yeah. the whole idea of prosperity. Right. But like, in First Kings seventeen, you read of uh, uh, Elijah, right, and how he basically prayed I mean it's exactly what James kind of brings out right he prayed and the uh, the rain didn't come but you have to understand like why did Elijah pray in that way okay like he prayed and and what was the reason why he was praying well it's because Israel was in complete disobedience at the time yeah Israel had not uh, obeyed God's word uh, and God had earlier promised that hey listen if you don't obey me there will literally be a drought there will literally be no rain in your land for years and years and years and so what elijah was doing was praying in accordance with god's word turn with me really quick to deuteronomy chapter 11 it's 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 kind of amazing to see like the thread of the bible right so get this so elijah knowing deuteronomy chapter 11 right would have been praying in light of this because of Israel's disobedience. It says this in verse 13, it says, And it shall come to pass, if ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, that I will give you the rain of your land in his due season, of the first rain and the latter rain, that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and uh, thine oil, 
and I will send grass in the fields for thy cattle, that thou mayest eat and be full. Take heed to yourselves, that your heart be not deceived, and that ye, that ye turn not aside and, and serve other gods and worship them. And then the Lord's wrath will be kindled against you, and he will shut up the heavens. Notice that. Mm. That there be no what? I know you have an ESV there. Yeah, I was going to say, there'll be no rain. There'll be no rain, though, mm. right? And that the land yield neither her fruit, lest ye perish quickly off the good land which the Lord gave you. So, Elijah, taking, taking James chapter 5 within its context, Elijah was praying in accordance with God's will and God's word which he had revealed, which is how Christians need to pray. Okay, prayer is not just like this, like, you know, you know bingo machine or, you know, casino machine yeah. that you drop a quarter in and then you would kind of expect, like, oh, you know, God's going to bless me the if I have... Comes out, yeah, right. the gumball comes out. You know I mean? That's not, a, that's not what it is. Prayer is praying in accordance with what God has already promised me. Right. For instance, okay, if you find yourself in financial, let's just take financial issues for a minute. If you find yourself in financial issues... Um, and you find yourself on your knees at night praying to the Lord, Lord, please provide for me. Please uh, take care of me and my family. Please do these things. How are you praying? Well, you're praying, well, your word has promised, just like Elijah, that you'll never leave me nor forsake me. You own the cattle on a thousand hills. You know, you're the one who, who, who owns these things. You know better what I need and what I don't need. You know what I mean? Like, in your sovereignty. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Because here's the thing, is that nine times out of ten, I, I'll be honest with you, um, you know, I've asked the Lord to... <laughs> you know, I'll be guilty of this. I've, like, asked the Lord for, like, more money or, or, or you know, whatever to provide for a need, and, mm -hmm. and he just provides for the need. He doesn't give me anything else. I know. He provides <laughs> for the need. But, you know, he's always faithful to do that. Why? Because his word says he will. Yeah, it's, Always. it's funny. I you a, get what I'm saying? Yeah, I, a, I, a, I mean, just talking about yeah. wealth for, I, I for a minute. Say, yeah. I, I have a specific example of that that's kind of funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, when, yeah. <laughs> this is great. When mm. um, when we had Chloe, mm. uh, as, as we know from previous episodes, yeah. uh, you know, she was in the NICU for the first couple months of her life. <clears throat> and, you know, uh, Sarah and I don't make a, a ton of money. We're, you know, yeah. we, we, we make just enough to get by. Sure. Um, as most of us do, yeah. As most of us do. Yep. Um, and so, at the time, we're you know we're going up to UMass every day. That gas bill is insane. Oh yeah. Um, through through means of friends and family, the church, many yeah. different needs, um, we were we were blessed to receive money for gas for that yep. time. Um, and it was it was amazing. It, and, and you see God's hand day by day, not just. A lot of times we want that like lump sum. We want like right. that lottery winning. You yeah. Know what I mean? Like. <laughs> yeah. Where, exactly. Yeah. Where's the abundance? Where's the abundance, yeah. Lord? I'm exactly. praying. Yeah, like, yeah. Don't you see? I have enough faith. But Come uh, on! it was you know? funny. We we had you know we had these we had these gas cards. Yeah. And, um, and we, we were so appreciative for that. Yeah. And I know. Uh, it, you know, we used we used the last card on the final NICU trip. Wow. I mean, you talk exactly what you... I mean, there was, like, not a cent extra mm. that... Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was just enough for that need. It was perfect. It's amazing. It was a perfect... It was like the math worked yep. out just right so that we had just enough gas cards to, to support that. And, 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 that's, and that's the that amazing was awesome. part. I remember think, using the last one, I'm thinking, like... Yeah, Lord, you provided, yeah, Lord, the everything Lord provided that I need. The Lord provided. And 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 that's what I'm one talking about. One of many about. ways, by the way, he provided. Well, that's the thing. It's like he will provide every single one of our needs. Yeah. Our needs. Not our abundance. Yep. Okay? Now, here's there, the thing. There's, there's a huge difference. There's here. a huge difference. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Now, here's the thing that the health and wealth people get right, and I do want to jump back to the, to the actual article. Yep. Um, will... Christ ultimately provide for us in abundance. Yes, he oh, will. Oh, sure. Yeah. He will eventually. Yeah. I mean, there's going to come a day when we're going to step foot into eternity with eternal life. I would call that abundance. Yep. Okay. That's, that, <laughs> I mean, yeah. That, like, just a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Lavish. So, but the problem, the, the, the difference between the, the, um, uh, the health and wealth people and the Bible is that they want it now. Yeah. Um, they want it right now. Uh, there was there was uh, uh, in Pilgrim's Progress. We're going through Pilgrim's Progress in our uh, in our Sunday school class right now, 
and um, there's the part where Christian is brought into the house of the interpreter. Yeah. And he is shown a bunch of different pictures, and or a bunch of different scenes or whatever. And one of them is the difference between two characters called Patience and Prudence. And Patience waited, uh, not Prudence, uh, Patience and, um, not Prudence. Something to do with impatience, I forget. You know okay. what I mean? I forget I forget the name, excuse me. Um, uh, yeah, if you, maybe if you can find it. But, the, um, but basically, Patience and this other character who was... Uh, you know, passion, in, passion, patience, and passion. I knew it began with a P. Exactly. God bless the uh, internet. Yes, thank you, Lord. Uh, thank you, thank, <laughs> thank you, Adam. You know, I mean, Amen. Thank you, Lord, and thank you, Adam. Uh, patience and passion. Excuse me. Yeah. And um, and how patience waited patiently for the abundance that God would give yeah. later on in heaven, whereas passion wanted it now. And that's the only way that I can describe health and wealth people is yeah. as the passion. They want it. They want it now. They demand it now. They demand health now. They when God has promised health in heaven. Yeah. They demand wealth now, when God has promised wealth in heaven, a wealth beyond our abundance, wealth beyond what we can comprehend here on earth, mm. and um, it's absolutely amazing. That, but yeah, that, that, that's yeah. an important point. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was going to bring up a few scriptures mm. mm-hmm. uh, to back that up because yeah. uh, Luke in particular. Uh, well, the Gospels, really, all of them. But yeah. I, I only think of Luke because I, you know, just fresh in my mind. But, sure. Um, Jesus is is huge about delineating the difference between the temporal and the spiritual. He is. You know, um, you know the about setting the record straight on guys like. <laughs> You guys are so focused on, on the riches of this world, but you have no idea the riches of right? of heaven, yeah. the kingdom of heaven versus the kingdom of earth. You know what I mean? Um, you know. And before before I touch on Luke, though, obviously there's there's the the huge scripture in Matthew six. Yeah, I was just I was just going to say of, Matthew Matthew chapter six where yep. where it says, "Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and dust doth corrupt." Right? Yeah. yeah. Was that yeah. where you're going? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah Matthew six uh, nineteen um, through twenty four. Yeah. Um, I mean. For me, if, if when you talk about defending against prosperity gospel, oh, Ma- yeah. Matthew six twenty four is like the bazooka. It is. I, I mean, I don't, for prosperity <laughs> gospel preachers, they must just pass right over Matthew six because that's well, well that's that's it, the thing is that is actually it's it's funny you bring that up because I mean like another uh, uh, gospel coalition uh, article that you can bring up is. Bible versus prosperity preachers wish didn't exist by <laughs> Conrad uh, Mumbwe and yeah, uh, yeah. and Matthew the, six got me in there the the very first one is it Matthew really? six yeah, yeah they, they start <laughs> off yeah. they start off with the canon right there uh, that, that'll blow well, away it will it yeah. will it definitely will I mean Matthew six twenty four no one can serve yeah. two masters yep for either he will hate the one and love the other or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other That's you cannot right. serve God and money nope. so when we think of these prosperity gospel teachers they're really serving both yeah they are or really they're only serving one honestly. they're really only serving one they're only only serving one because you can't you can't serve you right. cannot in serve. their in their mind in their mind they're they, serving in yeah. their mind they say oh well i can serve both oh uh, yeah really well, when it comes down to it they well, wouldn't i mean well, well they wouldn't say that they were serving both i mean like mm-hmm. honestly like they would say that they're serving god but at the that's end fair. of the day we that's can, fair we can yeah. we can say because any one of these preachers are going to turn around because i mean i've bumped into them i mean actually you find this in your local church it's amazing That's to true me. Too. Um, yeah. It's amazing how much it, it, it creeps in. Um, you know, I mean, we've been talking a lot about wealth. You know, and yeah, we haven't touched a lot on health. But kind of moving on to health. Yeah. I'll be completely frank with you. Health is where it kind of the rubber meets the road uh, in terms of pastoral ministry mm. and in terms of our ministry as believers in the local church because. Yeah. Here's the thing: is that you know better than me, Adam, how quickly health stuff can change. Oh okay? yeah. Yep. I mean, like whether it's death in the family, whether it's you know, uh, yeah, sickness, health issues, sickness, health issues, sure. a, a, a premature baby. Yeah. Uh, I mean, right? Sure. I yep. mean, yep. like, and all of a sudden, like, w- w- what are the thoughts that go through your mind at that point? I mean, like, like in all seriousness. I mean, like you can speak more about it than me. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, obviously, your first reaction is, uh, um, you know, after the shock of it, is is what did I do wrong? 
you know, you start to look at yourself and like, what, what did I, do? for sure, <laughs> what have I done to deserve this? Yeah, you know, um, <clears throat> which is again, it's self-focused, you know, uh, but that, that that is the first reaction though. Well, that well, that, I think well, that even, is even for even for solid believers, I think that's where your mind goes first. Yeah, um, which is understandable, but yeah. sinful. Yeah, you know. I mean, honestly, I mean, I I have had to deal with this more often, actually, at Eastford Baptist Church. Yeah. Uh, than any other church I've ever been in. Um, this idea of the 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 health gospel. Yeah. Because I've just had to deal with so much health issues. I mean, since I've yeah, been we've, here, we've had death, a lot of I mean, like, yep. and and people who are like, well, you know, have I did it? Was I praying in a yeah in, in a right way? Did we pray enough? I'll tell you a couple stories, and Adam, you you have heard many of these, and so I know you're going to get bored uh, with <laughs> them. But for our but for our, our listeners, um, you know, I for, first story in regard to health issues. I remember one time I was uh, I met with a woman who whose sister had died uh, relatively recently, and uh, and so I went and uh, talked to her, and her sister was caught up with you know like the Joel Olstein, you know uh, Kenneth Copeland mm-hmm. uh, any one of these Creflo, false, you know, Creflo dollar yeah. uh, you know all these different ones and so the the sister had died of some horrendous cancer tremendous horrendous cancer yeah. um, you know early age I mean I'm talking you know early for you know 40s I think um, we're not that far away man <laughs> and uh, I mean yeah. it could happen tomorrow to us. Uh, and so, I mean, having a good theology of this now is is always so beneficial. Yeah. Um, and so I remember standing there with her and having my arm around her when she was asking me, Pastor, did I pray the right way? You know, w- w- were my prayers heard by God? Was, you know, I, she, she, w- she was sitting there, like, crying. I doubted, I doubted, I doubted God's, you know, plan... Um, you know, I, I doubted God that he could heal her. You know, was that the reason behind why my sister died? And um, and I remember thinking in that moment, as I had my arm around this woman, um, I remember just thinking to myself, wow. I mean, I, it just was, it was just a, a you know, wow. I... I never ever want to hurt people in the way that this doctrine has hurt people. I want to make sure that my doctrine is clear, that our doctrine on on death and our doctrine on uh, understanding the importance of the eternal life that God has brought us is so very clear in my preaching and my teaching. Um, and of course, I went on to comfort her. I remember another story, just. You know, and you know this one very well. Um, is uh, another man in our church, and I've mentioned him many times. Howard Budd was was uh, was, yeah. and I know Jack doesn't <clears throat> mind me mentioning him. He had a great impact on my life, um, yeah, and his testimony and, my, and uh, as a pastor. But he, uh, I remember one of our deacons at the time. He's no longer a deacon. Um, I need to be careful what I say, of course. But, sure. Uh, you know, but he knows I disagree with him, and people know I disagree with him. So I, so you know, there's no, there's no animosity towards him in in, in any way, shape, or form. I think he's wrong, and he knows I know this. So yeah, there's no, um, it's not there's a no, either. it's not a slam or anything like that. But I do believe he's wrong in this particular regard. But I remember him coming to me and saying, um, as Howard was dying in his last like two weeks. Uh, he came to me and, and basically told me that, you know, the reason behind why he was dying uh, was because our church was not praying properly for him. Um, and that was an eye-opening experience for me, Adam. I, I, I'll be completely frank with you. Uh, you know, I, I remember standing there kind of in awe of what was coming out of his mouth at the time. And... And again, I mean, some people probably would be upset at me that I even mentioned, you know, the particular context of it, but I don't really care. It affects our local churches. And um, this is how close it comes. It comes from your closest, sometimes your closest 
leaders in your church. This is how deep it goes sometimes. And I remember asking him after he told me that, well, you know, our church just essentially doesn't have enough faith to save this man. Hmm. I remember asking him this question, and I believe it was of the Lord. I asked him, are you going to go and tell his wife that, or am I? Hmm. And <laughs> it that was the end of the conversation, obviously. Yeah. And um, because, obviously, his wife has tremendous faith. His wife is still with us and serving tremendously, and we praise God for that. Um, she looks forward to seeing him again someday. I look forward to seeing him again someday and shaking his hand. Mm -hmm. um, I I really do. Uh, but 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 this is this is the devastation. The reason I bring up those two those I, those two sad stories is because this is the kind of devastation that comes with this theology. It destroys people because honestly, if we were to take either one of those things, you know. Uh, those stories that I said, and we took the theology to its nth degree, what it would mean is that there was either something deficient in the church or something deficient in that woman's prayers, my prayers. I know I'm deficient. I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm not right with the Lord all the time. I know all these things. So ultimately, who do I have to trust? So ultimately, what it comes back to is that there is something deficient with God. That is where their theology leads, that there is something wrong with God which they won't allow for because, of course, nobody wants to say that there's nothing wrong with God. Uh, so ultimately, it's there's something wrong with me. And what I'm arguing for is that, yes, there is something wrong with me. It's called sin. There's something wrong with this world called sin. But what I'm also arguing for is that there's something better. There is a place called heaven. There's a place called heaven where every tear is going to be wiped away uh, where there is going to be no need for prayer anymore because God will be right there where every disease will be you know, a thing of the past it's going to be absolutely amazing I look forward to that day I look forward to being with Christ every day um, Jonathan Edwards said this uh, I have it on my wall over there in the I know nobody can see it from here, but I have the resolutions. Um, I'm actually going to mention it on Sunday. But um, Jonathan Edwards, in his resolutions that he wrote when he was like 20 years old, which, you know, he wrote a list of like 90 something <coughs> resolutions, things that he wanted to do with his life. Um, and uh, one of those things was uh, to think every day upon his death. Um, and today's by today's standards that would seem morbid that would seem like something like well why would you think upon your death well as a christian we look forward to it to a certain degree we do to die is gain to die is gain yeah when one day like my, i'm going to throw down my sword i'm not going to have to fight anymore i'm not going to have to you know uh i'm not going to have to strive for holiness i'm not going to have to pray and and battle every day for these things I'm going to have to all I'm going to have to do is bask in the radiance of the glory of my Lord and I look forward to that day but until that day what do we do do we buy into garbage theology like this that dupes believers and hurts people and that's my main issue with with health and wealth gospel is that it hurts people it hurts people in our pews. It changes their theology. It 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 uh, and not just it deceives it, them. It deceives them into believing that somehow, some way, shape, or form, that you know what I contributed to the death of my loved one, or I contributed to this cancer in some way, shape, or form in my life, or I you know did this or that to to, and and nothing could be further from the truth. Our God doesn't work that way, at all. You know, our God, our God is a gracious God and a loving God and, and an awesome God. And even when he allows things to come into our lives, whether it's financial ruin, whether it's, you know, health issues or anything along those lines, he has a greater purpose in it. It is not of Satan. 
It is, it is completely in his control, and he utilizes it for his glory's sake, and so that we can look forward to the greater salvation that he has promised us, and that is in Jesus Christ. And I'm sorry, I really went on a really long no, preaching tangent there. I apologize. It's perspective. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, I'm sorry. It's, yeah. it's, at the end of the day, it's a perspective issue. Yeah. Um, I know I, we keep looping back around to this, but yes. it's, it's the, the prosperity gospel focuses on now. Yes. The gospel gospel, the yes. real gospel, focuses on the kingdom to come. That's right. It um, does. And that's that's I think really where the key difference well, I mean there's yeah. many there's many key differences, but I think that's kind of the crux of it. I agree. Is um you mentioned it actually quite a bit in your explanation there. Um we look forward to a day when we don't have to battle anymore. That's right. Um the the prosperity gospel focuses on on you know what we can do to help win the battle now mm. but the gospel says the battle first of all has already been won mm-hmm. in Christ that's right okay but that we have uh, you know we have our reward that's already right. and that's uh, right. And that's not to say that we need to completely discount the life the life we're living now because God like you said God's going to use it for his glory. Um, but we have to remember that that it's that's not right. it's not about glorifying ourselves now. It's about glorifying our Father, yeah. our Father in heaven. Um, and yeah. you know, you think of biblical examples. I mean, just in in health. I mean, people in you know, these great men of faith in the Bible, um, they dealt with health issues. Yes, they did. So you're going to tell me that prayer and faith? Excuse me. Yeah. <coughs> Prayer and faith are going to completely heal you. What about what about these men? Well, it's like in the, the Bible. I mean, yeah, I mean, the Paul. Apostle, yeah, I mean, Paul himself. I mean, beaten, shipwrecked. Uh, we we don't know whether or not he suffered with blindness. Yeah. I mean, like some people think that that's what that that was the thorn in the flesh that yeah. the Lord gave him. Could have been anything. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. like maybe blindness. I mean, like it, it says in one of the letters, it says that you see what big letters I'm writing to you in. Like, like literally, like some people take it like literally big letters, like he was, like he couldn't see. Right. It could have been, uh, it could have been anything. Could have been, yeah. Yeah. So there are issues, though. I, I, I mean, Jesus himself. I mean, like physical issues. Jesus went to a cross, people. <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, like you want to talk about health? Jesus was nailed to a cross and had a spear stuck in his side. Uh, he was beaten and scourged before that. And not to mention, Jesus was poor, guys. And Jesus was completely poor. He, he was he, as poor as poor gets. <laughs> he was homeless. Yeah, he was a homeless teacher, is he, what he was. You know, people people provided him with food. I mean, the guy, he was the ultimate example of humility. He was. You know, he wasn't like some rich guy going around town in a fancy suit. No, like. he wasn't. <laughs> It, it, Could you it, imagine? It, it wasn't beneficial. It, it wasn't. It, it wasn't a beneficial thing. No. And and unfortunately, what where I believe that the prosperity gospel has uh, bred itself has been in uh, you know nineteenth, twentieth century, twenty first century American Christianity. I yeah. mean, honestly, yeah. as we, we have, it capitalizes on people's greed. Really. It does. I mean, ultimately, and and com- and and need for comfort. And need for comfort. Yeah. Emotional. I and, think, and which physical, is another sure. and physical, yeah. but yeah. because lest we get into this too deeply, um, there was a time in American Christianity wherein you know being a Christian was a lucrative thing and still is in certain mm. parts of the country. Yeah, not so much where we're sitting. Uh, yeah. In New yeah. England, yeah. it's a little bit different. There are areas when being a pa- where being a pastor is like you know you could. Get yourself a nice house and. Uh... Well, well, I I, I would say yeah, d- not just being a pastor, but I would say that 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 being a businessman. Yeah. In in a local community and being able to make connections with people in that community, well, you know, so and so is a Christian and he owns the you know X Y and Z shop up the road. Hmm. Yeah. So I can trust him. There was a time when Christianity was. Nowadays, though, however, Christianity is not as well accepted as as what it once was. Especially and getting where less we're so. At. And getting less so. So it really doesn't matter whether or not you go to church. It really doesn't matter whether or not you're a Christian. So therefore, you find that you know the church is suffering. So like back in the 70s and 80s, we built these gigantic facilities. Okay, and 90s. 
we built these gigantic facilities because realistically the 70s 80s and 90s it was there was some benefit to being a christian uh, there was there was uh, even in new england i think would say i would say that to a certain extent maybe not so much it was definitely dying in the 90s when we were kids but uh, but now now that we're past the 2010s um, it's getting to that point where people don't care whether or not you're a Christian or not. They don't look at that as anything different. Um, unfortunately, because Christianity has been so maligned, I would I would argue there's so many other factors that I could bring in, but, uh, you know, fake Christianity like this, yeah. um, you know, uh, and other things that, that they have brought in. But people, uh, but Christianity is not the lucrative business that it once was. Mm. And I don't think ever was intended to be. Uh, to be honest with you, because what is the heart of Christianity? Christianity is, at its heart, means denying yourself. Christianity, first and foremost, in order to be a Christian, means that you must deny who you are. And what do I mean by that? It means that I'm a sinner, and I, I can earn nothing in terms of my salvation. Uh, I, I have sinned against God, and I deserve nothing. And you know what? I, as a matter of fact, I deserve far worse than that. I deserve to be thrown into hell. And uh, and yet another, somebody else has to be my righteousness, and that is Jesus Christ. And to the world that that is not, in, in a world that says just be yourself, it doesn't matter who you are. It, it, you know, uh, whether you're, you know. You be you. You be you. Whether you're, it doesn't matter. I mean, like we see it, especially in the sexual revolution. I mean, like whether you're gay, transgender, uh, homosexual, you know, what I mean, any of these things, just be you. Whether you're, a, you know, a single family home, whether you're a, you know, a male and male family home, you know, what I mean, like whatever. It, it be be who you are. Be who you are, and there is no condemnation. Who are we to judge? To quote Pope Francis of our day. You Catholics who are listening, understand your Pope is going in a very different direction than what your church has uh, traditionally uh, held to. Just letting you know that. Um, but I didn't want to talk about Catholics today. Uh, you know, I mean, we'll talk about that another day. But, uh, but, but, you know, who are we to judge? To quote Pope Francis. Right. Um, and so, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, look... Uh, true Christianity is becoming more and more of a uh, a subset of the of the culture, and eventually I think it will be ostracized. To be honest with you, if history is any is any telltale sign, and if the Bible is any telltale sign, because what does the Bible say? The Bible says that all those who are godly in Christ Jesus will what will suffer persecution. Yeah. And and yeah. It's it's unfortunate because the prosperity gospel has become so far reaching and so widely accepted amongst amongst Christians yeah. that like you know th these prosperity teachers get famous yeah so then they become the go to they become the go to uh, resources for for maybe yeah. secular things who maybe have to deal with Christianity or yeah so I, I, I only say that because I the other day I was watching a history channel show yeah I don't know I think I made a sensuous screenshot and yeah. uh, it was about the life of Jesus yeah and so uh, it, it's a documentary. So they're, you know, obviously the History Channel is a secular source. So they're, yeah. so they're dealing with the Bible in a very secular way. Um, I was interested. I was just, I was just interested to see what they had to say. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you know the facts of it, or you know, they're all, the facts are all there. It's fine, whatever. I mean, and so one of their talking heads is Joel Osteen. <laughs> Click. Yeah. It, it to me for someone who who knows the actual gospel, yeah. that program loses all its credibility. Yeah. Um, because you know, we're we're dealing with someone who is a prosperity teacher. Yeah. They they don't understand the gospel. Well, that's the thing, and um, I mean, it, obviously, it, and what it yeah. does what it does is it, it it the prosperity gospel has become the representative viewpoint. From secular, pe for, for the, the world sees Christianity as what Joel Osteen says it is. Yes, you because know. it's so intertwined with it, and and we should do another show on this. But how Christianity has become so intertwined with American culture, 
and American Christianity. So dangerous. Um, Amer- yeah. Americanism. Yeah. And patriotism. Yeah. Which yes. We can which we can talk about another time. Yes. But but yeah. I think that the bit because it has become so intertwined with those things, I think that when we see somebody who is prosperous like Joel Alstein. Um, all of a sudden, you know, that's what we equate with Christianity. That, right. That that Joel Olstein is America's preacher. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I I consider him a false teacher. Yeah. Like he is he is not. I was gonna say I don't mean to pick on Joel, but yeah, I kind of do. Because I mean, like uh, he. I mean, like not not just uh, see everybody picks on Joel because Joel. He's the face, really. Of it. He is the face of it. Yeah. I mean, like That's he is. He has put himself up as the face of it. Him, Creflo. I mean, uh, Creflo what, is, uh, is a very close second. Um, I would say Joyce Meyer. I think sure. is another one. Paula White. Uh, Paula White is another one. Yes, definitely. There's a couple. Um, of, I see here. T T D uh, T D Jakes. T D Jakes is definitely Guillermo another Malinato. one. And, yep. There are, there are so many there's, that... There's a lot that, of them, yeah. And it's funny because, you know, you end up getting these... You know, you, you can walk into a Christian bookstore and, like, one, one of the things... Uh, Sarah used to work in a Christian bookstore. Yeah, yeah. And uh, she worked at uh, Morningstar in Manchester. And uh, so she would set up all it's the books. It's a great books. bookstore. Yeah, it's a great bookstore. Uh, she would set up all the books and everything else. Is there a, her- so, a heresy section? Well... <laughs> What ended up happening was in the Christian living section, if you want to call it that, quote unquote. I'm doing air quotes right yeah. now. Um, she would set up all the books, and she would like put like the better books like face front. You ever you ever you ever see that like they're like face front and yeah. like and then and then instead like of, the binding bar- and with the bounding. Out, yeah. Well, her boss actually rebuked her one day. Like no no lie, he's not working there anymore, so I don't really care. Uh, but uh, the boss rebuked her one day and basically said, "Hey, listen, we expect you to put Joel and his toothy smile as you know face face front because that's what sells books. That and and Joyce Meyer, those were the those were both. Joyce Meyer is a false teacher too. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. You know, and um, uh, you know, hey, truth, truth, man. It, it is because Sorry. everybody wants to be that. Everybody yeah. as a Christian, in our heart of hearts, we are so." Depraved that yeah. all of us want to be Joel Olstein. I was gonna say I'm a writer. I would yeah. love I would love to put out awesome books like that. Yeah, I mean like all the time, right? The I mean, books like, that I would write, I mean, probably wouldn't sell as much as Joel. I mean, no, but but it's, at the it's same an time, message like, really. Every single Joel Olstein book has you know like a like his affirmations tooth, for life. toothy smile, like oh I could yeah. I could be selling Colgate, you know what I mean? Like you know what I mean? But. Uh, well, one, one, one last thing before we... I know we got to put a bow on this pretty soon, and not to steal your thunder it's with corporatism. the bow, Daniel, but, It's corporatism. But it is. Yeah. Um, uh, there was a great article put out by D.A. Horton uh, on the Nine Marks website, and um, I know we give you guys a lot of resources, mm-hmm. and that's part of our job as Gospelicious. By the way, is, by the yeah. way, I don't, I, yeah. I don't want to make uh, yeah. make complete fun of Joel. That is a great smile, though. It is a great smile. He 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 definitely has a great smile. I, mean, I will say that he's taking care of himself. He's taking care of himself tremendously. Let's let's, let's just. I don't want to. I don't want to make it's fun of that. Great smile. It's a great great the smile. Best Christian smile best, there is. Best chiclet smile. Amazing. I've ever seen. Tremendous. <laughs> We haven't I done mean, a, we haven't done a, a Trump we can, impression in a we, while. We, 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 we can cr- we can criticize Joel's theo- uh, Joel's theology, but uh, let's not criticize that smile. Have you ever seen just just real quick Come before on. I keep going? Have, have you ever seen the fake Joel Olstein? No. Oh yeah, yeah. You seen the yeah, fake Joel Olstein in, in, in the Astrodome? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when he snuck into the end. That was amazing video. Uh, wait, 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 like, wait, shake people's hands. Yeah, he's shaking people's hands. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, that's great. You know. That is awesome. Wait, yeah. Go Strauss! Yeah. Go Strauss! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's great, you know. But, but anyway, yeah, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to cross the line into I know. making fun of Joel. I know, I know. But but you know, we Joel, need to pray for that man. We we, we do, and, and what a tremendous. See, the thing is, this is if Joel Osteen came to Christ, and he actually like denounced all the things that he preached, like you know, he he. Could you done, imagine the impact that would make? I mean, like they would kick him out so fast. They would they would ostracize him like yeah. he would they would they would call him a crazy, like that's what they would do. I mean, that would be a headline on CNN. It would be a headline on CNN that Joel Osteen I would, I, I would tell is you a part right of now. a cult. Like yeah. that's what they would call us. Yeah. Because that's how the world sees Christianity. That's how they see it. If Joel Osteen got saved, which I don't, I listen. Yeah. Joel, listen. Believe the gospel. You've you've read the Bible many times. 
you know, if somehow you come across our YouTube video, like, you know, all, like, ten people who, like, in your watch, office in, you know, in your office in, in Texas, in Houston, yeah. like, listen, believe Jesus Christ died for your sins on the cross, trust that alone, and trust him completely, not all of this garbage that you preach, it's not about your best life now, or anything along those lines, just trust Christ and preach him, you know what I mean, regardless if you have ten people or ten thousand, um, but anyways, um, you know, but anyways, getting back to what I was going to say. He like, would lose everything. He would lose everything. He would lose it all. Yeah. It would be it. Uh, that is and, it. And, and, hey, You know what? Let's pray for that. Amen. We, we should, should definitely we should be pray, pray for, for that. that. <laughs> but just real quick, yeah. uh, you know, Nine Marks, <laughs> yeah. uh, D.A. Horton, uh, brings, brings this out, and I think it's, I think it's a great way to kind of end it up. Yep. Um, Nine Marks of a Prosperity Gospel Church. And he writes, um, "How do you, this is on the ninemarks.org website? How do you assess a prosperity church?" Um, and he, this is this article is a little facetious. I won't read the whole thing, but a little wordy. Um, it's a little wordy, but basically, I'll just hit the headlines really quick. Uh, and realistically, how do you identify a church that is not prosperity gospel? Is the way that I would define the 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 title. Um, in other words, like if you come into a church and these things are not present, you're probably in a prosperity church to some degree. For instance, first and foremost, um, expositional preaching. Mm. You're not going to find that in a prosperity church. No. Verse you're by not. verse exposition. Because they're going to avoid key text or controversial text. That's right. Yeah. They're, they're because just pick and choose, cherry pick. Yep. Sure. So, so you're going to take one verse out and basically say, you know what, like like a James yeah. five or. Yeah. Or one of these other crazy passages, you it's, know. Yeah, instead of letting the scripture dictate your theology, you're going to put your theology into the scripture. Exactly. Which, it's it's eisegesis, boy. Uh, exactly, which leads to point number two, which is uh, biblical theology. Yeah. Uh, you know, exegesis is biblical theology, not yeah. eisegesis. Finding one verse and then yeah. building all of what I believe off of that one verse. I could do that with anything. Sure. I could do that with Harry Potter. I could do that with uh, with anything. You better you, Bibli- better you better check your Jesus before you wreck your Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's, that's great. I know he sent that in a text, you know, the other day, which is amazing. Sorry, and we have a group of guys who uh, who uh, yeah, and uh, it was great. You, you know, I have to work that in somehow. Yes, yes, Go yes, you Sorry. got to continue. Next, the gospel. Uh, plainly, you're not going to find the gospel of Jesus that you're a sinner. In need of a savior. Ooh, the S word. Yes, Ooh. salvation, right? Or no, sin. Sin. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, well, yeah. Well, salvation you know. too. Well, salvation Both and S-words, sin, yeah. yeah. Which, which comes to one that's very closely related, which is number four, conversion, which is the idea of, listen, you need to be converted. Not everybody is a good person. You know, it's not just a matter of toleration. It's not just a matter of, you know what, you made a mistake. No, you have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and you need Jesus to pay for your sins, and you need to put your faith completely in him in order to be saved. It's the gospel. You need to be converted. We don't like that term, converted. Yeah. You need to be converted from being a sinner to being a saint, to be, from being a sinner to being a Christian. End of story. And um, Which, you're not going to find that in a, in a health and wealth go- gospel church. No. Um, evangelism, okay, number five. Actually sharing this gospel with other people. Not just a matter of, oh, bring them in the church and help them, you know, oh, you know, they'll, they'll have their best life now or whatever other, yeah, again, I keep ragging on Joel, but, <laughs> but, 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 but the fact is, is no, that like, look, I'm going to actively go out and I'm actively going to tell people, look, you need Jesus. You are a sinner. You are on your way to hell. You need Christ. And if you put your faith in Christ, you will be saved. Evangelism. Yeah. The Great Commission, you know what I mean, and uh, which leads to point number six. I'm sorry, I keep going, but yeah, go. church membership. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, you know, and again, this is a nine marks website, so they're very much focused on these things. Yeah, yeah. Um, church membership. The idea that no, it's not just after you have put your faith in Jesus that there is requirements of you. Okay, that that you have been changed. That right. you desire to honor the Lord in the context of where He has um, ordained, which is which is the local church. So, you know, in other yeah. words, in other words, the prosperity church would be there to serve you. Yes. In a non-prosperity church, you're there to serve others. Yes. Yes. That would be the the key difference. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Where, like, whereas, like, if you go into the Walmart, 
double Walmart sized Joel Olstein church in sure. Texas. There's going to be a big Ragged difference. Ragged Joel. I know. I keep or well, we or Joyce Meyer yeah. or T. A lot of these mega churches, or sure. any yeah. of these other ones. Okay? Not to say all mega churches are bad. Not all mega churches are bad. That'd be overgeneralization, I think. But but I will say this by and large. Sure. I think that there's a. Re- Let me just use this analogy really quick, and I know you got to run. Um, yeah, we got a couple minutes. Yeah, I will say this: is that we're called the body of Christ, right? What happens when the body gets too fat? Yeah, true. It's true. I mean, like, like honestly. At what like, point? At what point does a church just become a social club? In that, even I mean, and, yeah. And there's no way you could ever meet anybody in a life, meet everybody in that church in a lifetime. Exactly. And and this is what I'm talking about. Is like, is that really a I church think, at that point? I think that small local churches are where it's at. I think that that's where you gain the intimacy. I think that's where you gain the like. Listen, if I was a pastor of a mega church, I wouldn't know anybody. Right. I would like literally preach. Yeah. I would go back to my office. I would get my paycheck, yeah. and that would be it. Like whereas, like as a pa- like, like, I'm just being honest. Yeah. Well, that being said, too, I mean, there are churches that are growing really fast. That you know that. But I, I think so. I think they handle it right though when they kind of like. They, you know, split or maybe do like a campus here or a campus there. Yes, and, and, and their are way is smaller. And that's that's my that's my point. Yeah, is that sorry. is that yeah. is that the local church needs to figure out? Okay, if we get large enough, right? What are we gonna do here? Do we just have like a, a, a million people in one place, yeah. or do we, you know, split off and formulate? We can have a different discussion about yeah, about I mean, satellite churches. Yeah, yeah I, or, I think it's unfair to criticize big churches just by their numbers. Well, I agree. But, I just think that by and large, I sure. think that my opinion. Yeah. Okay, just Tim Howard's opinion sure. for a minute. Um, the larger the church, honestly, usually, 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 that's, a, that's fair. The poorer the doctrine. That's fair. That's fair. There's definitely a correlation. And, there. and, and there's be. there's a there huge correlation. And and this is the reason why like like mega church pastors. Yeah. And when I say mega church, I'm talking like four hundred or more, three or four hundred or more. Yeah. And I don't care where you're at. That's a mega church for New England. Like dude, like we are seen as big. Like 130, 140 people a week. That is seen as a big church in New England. Yeah, it is. It's true. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and the only churches that exceed that are false churches in New England. And if that's any symptom of what's coming to the Midwest and what is coming to the Bible Belt, Oof. you all need to. I'm sorry, Bible Belt people, but this is coming your way. Take it from you know, take it from New England. Take it from people who know what's going on in regard to because everything spreads. Just letting you all know, you're up. New England, Midwest Bible Belt. End of story. California, forget you. But but uh, <laughs> but you're already gone. You're about as bad as us. You're worse than us. But but Midwest California. Bible Belt. You know what I mean? California. <laughs> yeah, 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 I get to the chopper. Get up but, here. Yeah, yeah. but uh, <laughs> just real quick, and, and then and then we'll end. Yeah. Uh, along with church membership comes church discipline, yeah. which is accountability. Oh, yeah. I, I don't like the term discipline. I like the term church accountability yeah. because the idea that, like, look, you have a group of people who love you enough that are going to keep you accountable for your yeah. sin. And, yeah, sometimes and, discipline. And sometimes discipline to put you outside. Yeah, discipline Discipline is not always a bad thing. It You're might, right. It, it might feel bad at first, but it's for a good reason. It's always for restoration. It's out of love. Always, always love. for love. And it stinks to go through. And unfortunately, you can't do that intimately in a, yeah. in a large church. People the word discipline. You know, you can't do that yeah. intimately in a large church. True. Dis- That's dis- true. Discipleship, meaning that you know you're growing as a Christian, that you're growing yeah. as a disciple in Christ. I think that that larger churches can do this better than us, to be completely frank with you, because honestly, usually in a smaller church, you have one pastor, and he's usually scrambling to disciple a hundred and yeah. you know whatever people. Spread whereas yeah. whereas like a larger church, if they're a good gospel church. You have a lot of pastors. You have yeah. a lot of people who can yeah. elders who can who can do that. Um, but discipleship is definitely a, a mark of that. And then finally, church leadership. Yeah. Meaning this is that uh, having a pastor who is uh, who is uh, knows me, cares for me, is shepherding me actively. Um, this is another area where and and please don't take this as a, a, a knock. I mean, today's today's uh, podcast was about. Um, Sorry, it was very critical. Well, it was critical, but on the other end of the spectrum, and I don't want to knock large churches completely, right. Right. but I think that this is another area where larger churches 
need to really rethink their model because they struggle in this. Yeah. Because how can you have tremendous church leadership? Well, you say, well, we have nine pastors on staff. Right. Good for you. Well, what's the difference between you know some hireling pastor in the you know pyramid scheme of things versus the guy preaching at you each and every week? There's a difference. There's a difference between that guy and investing in my life and sitting across the desk from me and and investing in me and being in my home and having his legs under my under my table having a meal. There's a difference between that and then some other guy. I'm sorry. I, I know this is opinion. And and please forgive me. I'm not being, you know, super whatever, but I think honestly, when you talk about health and wealth and you talk about the prosperity gospel, um, I think that our churches would do much better to have, you know, ten or twelve or fifteen smaller local churches that meet independently of one another than have than have one low one big giant hub hub. Yeah. And uh, you know, but I know I'm probably we, we could spend a lot more time yeah, on that, and end. I you know we got to end. So, but at, Brother the, Adam, at yeah. the end of the day, yeah. at the end of the day, prosperity teaching capitalizes on people's selfishness. Yes, it does. It, it does. capitalizes on their need for success, and and we all have it. Yes, we do. We're all sinners, man. We do. And you know, in my heart of hearts, I get it. Yep. Um. You know, in my, when when you think about our sin, our sinful nature, mm-hmm. uh, of course we get it. I mean, yes, we, we all we all we all want that at our core. Yes, we do. Um, but we have to be so careful because mm-hmm. the devil's working, man. Yes, and he I, does. I, I, there was a great quote. I forget who said it. Where um, this guy said, uh, and we could end with this if you want. Yeah, but yeah, the, yeah, it yeah. says the devil is not dumb enough to. Out, I, I'm butchering the quote, but no. the devil's not dumb enough to directly oppose Christianity mm. most, most times or whatever. It's, it's it, and then he said the devil has created false Christianity to deceive people. Yes, yeah, yeah. I was actually we're looking dealing for with that a, quote. It was Vance Havner. It was okay. It. Yeah, it we're was dealing Vance with Havner. a very smart yeah. enemy, guys. Yes, it is. Um, yep. And he's using false Christianity to deceive millions. Yes. Millions of people do not fall for it. Yes, do not fall for Amen. it, guys. Jesus paid the price. Amen. Okay, you cannot earn anything. No. Okay, Jesus did that. Yes, trust in Jesus. Amen. Um, anything you want to add before we close? Nope. I think that's a great way to button it up. I think when it comes, you know, there's that uh, in in the game show Family Feud. When you get a wrong answer, there's a big red X that comes on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Prosperity gospel? <laughs> yeah, That's right. there you go. We'll have to put that in the in the video. That's right. <laughs> anyway, guys, um, we hope you enjoyed today's podcast. Uh, Thank you. Well, you guys can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can find our videos on YouTube. Audio versions of this pod are on iTunes, Podomatic, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. Tune Amen. in. Amen. Where all your podcasts are offered. Subscribe, like, share, all that good stuff. Amen. Spread the gospelicious word, people. Spread it. People. Spread it. People. That's right. People. Until mm. next time, for Pastor Howard. Amen. Pastor Timothy Howard. Happy painting and God bless. <laughs> Always. You heard it there first. Guys. Always. Every time. <laughs> this is Adam Miner. Have a good one, guys. We'll see you next time. Have a good one. Amen. Thank you all. See ya. Bye, 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 bye.